Guys, so I'm back with my reading and I'm um, still on this book called Ink and Grow Rich. I am on section six, chapter one. To whom can you turn to for help? A profile of a great CPA. I have about an hour and a half until the recyclable um, opens up. The recyclable. That person thinks they're so cool with their Porsche. But, um, yeah, so I have um, about an hour and a half, 7.30 right now. Let me look at my new watch. Yeah, it's 7.30, and so I'll just read one chapter so I can upload it. So chapter one, who can you turn to for help? A profile of a great CPA. How to select the CPA. Checklist for finding a good CPA. Who should prepare my taxes? The differences between CPAs, enrolled agents, bookkeepers, and tax or financial attorneys. <clears throat> Case study 20, Diane. <clears throat> a profile of a great CPA by C.W. Al Allen. This profile is given as an example of how you should regard your CPA. Diane Kennedy is one of the greatest friends a small corporation can have. I say this because I have seen her work wonders with clients of mine. I've seen her put, I've seen her pull out tax codes, apply them to tax returns, and reduce client taxes legally and simply up to 70%. I have seen her move a client from the red into the black just by restructuring the accounting system. These seem to be miracles to the people she is serving, but they are not miracles to her. They are a standard operating procedure. For example, a client called me with a major problem. I referred her to, Di to Diane. Within a very short time, Diane had her situation in perfect order and found w while reviewing her tax returns, for the past three years, she was able to get a refund for overpayment for all three years, exempting several thousand dollars per year. That wasn't all. She found a way to carry over a $300,000 loss against future income and had been completely overlooked by her accounting firm. Was the client pleased? I would say so. Another client said, thank you, Al, for introducing me to Diane. She got the picture of my disastrous situation instantly and called me back within the hour to ask, do you want a gentleman's letter to your ex-husband or do you want a hot one? <laughs> her hot one got action. The matter was finalized in my favor within hours. I like action. I like that. My former accountant had been sitting on the issue for months. She's fucking lazy. That's why. Key points. Ask successful business owners. She's not lazy. She's doing something she doesn't enjoy. That's plain and simple. Key points. Ask, success, ask successful business owners for recommendations before you select a CPA. Well, I know who to ask. I'm going to ask Tino. Like, like and trust the CPA you choose. Like and trust the CPA you choose. Doesn't it look better with the watch on my, my arms? <laughs> Do your homework. Find the best to prepare your taxes. <clears throat> How to select a CPA. A CPA is someone whom you see once a year who fills out your tax forms and who charges you too much money, right? Wrong. A good CPA can be your best business partner. They can provide you objectively with information to help you make crucial business decisions. A CPA can play a vital role in the day-to-day -day operations, investment strategies, and of course, tax planning for business. Seven sound tips for selecting a good CPA. <clears throat> Number one, make a list of what you expect from your business relationship with your CPA and what characteristics and qualities you think a good CPA should have. These might include knowledge of the tax laws, good communication skills, technical competence, ability to apply knowledge and creativity. Two, ask your successful business colleagues for references. Call Number three, call to make initial appointments with selected CPAs. So, you know, have meetings with more than one. It's like, a, it's like people trying to do a job interview for you. It's your business, you know. Do this before tax season, January 15th to April 15th, and before your immediate need of a CPA. So after, so before January 15th and after April 15th, and before your immediate need of a CPA, many CPAs will allow you a free 15 to 30 minute consultation to see if the match is good for both of you. Don't abuse this time. 
I once had a potential client who wanted a free initial consultation of six hours and expected me to prepare a corporate tax return during that time. Cheap ass. Remember that CPAs sell time, which is their only product. Don't expect them to give away their product. Number four, come prepared to your initial meeting with copies of your last three tax returns. Last three years tax returns, a projection of income and expenses of the current year and specific questions. These will give the CPA an idea of your personal circumstances. Number five, analyze the working relationship with the CPA. Is this someone with whom you would feel comfortable sharing the most intimate details of, of your financial life? Could you ask stupid questions? If not, you aren't going to get the best service. Six, get a sense of the CPA's ability to apply tax laws, even though you may not be in a position to judge a CPA's knowledge of the tax laws. Test them. That's what he's pretty much saying. Of their tax, you know. If uh, test them to see if they're on it, you know. Let your CPA see your current tax situation and listen to any advice or changes that are recommended. Evaluate, evaluate whether these suggestions seem workable to you. Seven. Under, understand the difference in the services and fees of CPAs. Obviously, fees are a, con a consideration, but they should not solely influence your decision. Most accountants will cite their hourly fee. This can be very misleading as I have seen some accountants take three to four times as long to do the same as another. Additionally, many offices of staff accountants that do a lot of the preliminary work at a lower rate. Seek out a CPA who specializes in your type of business entity. Okay, yeah, so a CPA who's familiar with your type of business. Being familiar with the particulars of your business field, the CPA will not have to do further research at your expense and can serve you more efficiently. So they won't have to charge you for more time because they already kind of know. They won't have to charge you for, be, for, for having to become familiar with your type of business. They would already have known. Let me read this quote. Even if you are on the right track, you'll get run over if you just sit there. That's true. I ask new clients to send in their work and I then quote a fee based on the shape of their books. The cleaner the work and the less the accountant has to do, the lower the fee. In addition, this frees up the accountant to concentrate on planning, which is the most productive use of time for everyone. Yeah, so it's gonna kind of cost you a lot if, you, if your taxes are all fucked up and everything. It's gonna cost you a lot to, to get it all in order to be, it's, it's like an artist getting their easel ready, getting all their paints ready. You know, if, if if I have like an art studio that's all fucked up and all the colors are everywhere, but I, I'm trying to hire this artist to come draw for me, she's gonna have to charge me for just getting this shit in order. It's gonna take her longer, you know? <clears throat> Checklist for finding a good CPA. Get CPA referrals from other successful business owners. So he already mentioned that. I think we talked about that three times. Set up initial consultations with the CPA finalists during the off season. So before January 15th and after April 15th, um, set up initial consultations. Okay, and clearly indicate that this is only an initial consultation. So let them know this is just an initial consultation, which is usually like 15 to 30 minutes free, you know, just to see if, if they're a good fit for you. Prepare for the meeting with copies of all past returns and income projections for the current year. Discuss your business and business problems with the CPA. Identify characteristics that you find important. Are you comfortable with the person? Ask about the rates. Who should prepare your taxes? What is the difference between a CPA, a bookkeeper, and, and an enrolled agent and a tax attorney? Have you asked these questions before? The difference between them is in education and licensing requirements. The CPA, the CPA has the most stringent education and licensing requirements. He or she is licensed by a state and has continuing education requirements. For example, in the state of Nevada, CPAs are required to have a bachelor's degree in accounting, work two years in public accounting, pass a two-day test covering accounting, business law, and taxation, in addition to maintaining a minimum of 80 hours of continuing education every other year. That's like two weeks of school, pretty much. CPAs can prepare tax returns and can... CPAs can prepare tax returns and can represent taxpayers before the IRS. They can also perform other accounting duties, such as performing audits. Their activities are monitored by a state board to ensure that quality and integrity within the profession is maintained. The enrolled agent. An enrolled agent must pass an examination in tax law. To better ensure quality within the profession, enrolled agents frequently belong 
voluntarily to organizations that require continuing education. They can also prepare tax returns and can represent taxpayers before the IRS, but they cannot perform audits. The bookkeeper, unfortunately, anyone can call himself or herself a bookkeeper. There are no licensing requirements nor a monitoring, monitoring board. They can prepare tax returns, but cannot generally represent clients before the IRS. The tax attorney. Some attorneys also prepare tax returns. Attorneys can get an advanced degree in the taxation, LLM in tax. These tax attorneys usually have the best knowledge of tax law, but can be very expensive. Your selection. CPAs tend to have the most well-rounded education. However, some CPAs concentrate only on one aspect of accounting, such as auditing financial institutions and would have no knowledge of current tax law. Enrolled agents generally have good tax knowledge but can be limited by a lack of knowledge of financial statement preparation. The only way you can be sure of getting the best tax specialist is by doing your own footwork, ask questions, and form your own opinion. Conclusion, select a CPA that you admire, respect, and with whom you feel you want to work. Find out how your CPA can help you. Ask questions, even those dumb ones. The answers could save you money. Select a CPA that can best serve your needs in special business activity. All right, y'all, that was the end of that chapter. Section 6, Chapter 1.